Everybody, welcome back to Northern Lion Plays of Binding of Isaac After Birth Plus. 17 of the hardest FOD runs of my life. How was it? Oh, it was easy. We got the Mulligan 0 PQD M66R and a, a run with some genuine fear. Um, the Mulligan is amazing. Our stats are actually fine. Like 2.92 damage is. You know, we, we could get all angry Nintendo nerd about it, but I don't think there's much reason to do so. Um, it's not that bad because our rate of fire is relatively good. Blinding light, or the holy light I should say, obviously uh, solves that problem for us. And anything damage related is, is pretty much handled now for the time being. The real problem is obvious. HP is, uh, is a sincere issue. One Spirit Heart goes a very, very long way. I actually love having IV Bag, too, but... Um, really, the, the hard part now is just living long enough to get a Spirit Heart, you know? If, if we can live long enough to get a Spirit Heart, the world's our burrito. There you go. So we should be getting in there and taking out the, the carriers here, but at the same time, I don't really want to do that because I'm frightened about... There we go. I'm frightened about the champion. I, I was just gonna say, I can't help but notice I've had like one blinding light shot total, but that's okay. Many, many, many enemies in the game right now could kill us in one hit, so we're just... ...playing it as, as close to the vest as is conceivable. Don't even try it. These guys are spicy, too. They can... They can ruin your day like a track off of John Bryan's solo album. Okay, I don't know. Do we want to fight the boss? Probably. This this had big mini-boss energy. I feel very lucky we did not encounter a mini-boss in here. Come on, a bomb or HP or a bunch of money. HP is nice so we can, again, leverage it for money. I guess we got no other option, really, so uh, let's just go to town. Widow. Champion Widow. A modest degree of spice, but very low HP. Blinding Light will go like a super long way. Come on, come on. I missed with the blinding light shot, dude. I keep calling it blinding light as well. Okay, there you go. There you go. I'm not worried about the nomenclature. I make... Oh my god, that was close. I make my own nomenclature. HP or a spirit heart? That's... Okay, you gave me HP. This is a dream come true. We shouldn't have picked that up yet. That was a slight mistake on my part. I apologize. Now... I know what you're thinking. You went a little, a little hard on that one, but I'm willing to, I'm willing to go with this. Okay, so this room actually could pay incredible dividends for us because of the luck upgrade. Did I just destroy one of the statues with a holy light? I did not know that was possible. Please get Sinvicta on the line. He's gonna want to know about this incredible Isaac breakthrough. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so I'm just thinking about how we want to approach this. Well, first things first. Why don't we try shooting this thing with holy light? Might take a minute. What do you? I know you're working from home. You're inside anyway. Why are you making it such a big deal? <laughs> Nobody's going anywhere, dude. You watched the news recently? Settle in. All right, let's go see what's going on in the curse room, which we should do that on the way in. Watch, the bombs are quite dangerous here. I don't think we can afford to take any pills, honestly, which is, you know, unfortunate, but otherwise fine. So I think we will buy the Spirit Heart. Unfortunately, buying the Spirit Heart will preclude us from buying anything else. The only other items were the map and uh, the battery. The battery doesn't do anything for us, obviously. We could always use one play here, and then uh, of IV bag that is, and then buy the map. I don't. I think that's like something I would like to do, but I think it's bad for our chance of winning. So let's just move on instead. Honestly, I think just by going into that shop, we turn this from like a 
like a floor that well let me put it this way going to the shop normally doesn't have any value but i think it gave us a lot of value there mostly you know the spirit heart is really precious but also um the two luck upgrades are going to pay incredible dividends we got enough money to now go to uh to get an arcade on this floor which is what i was just going to say there the first floor controls a lot well the first and second floor they control they really set the tone for how the rest of your the rest of your life is going to go Unfortunately, this is not uh, the arcade we're looking for, but that's fine. Life goes on. Just want to, before we, we pivot off Isaac discussion, just want to get a little bit more, a uh, little deeper into this run, just to make sure that we're A-OK. -okay. Appreciate the payout there, and the luck upgrades are coming fast and furious. All we got to do is live long enough to make it to the chest so they actually prove useful. <laughs> The number one pickup for us right now, without a doubt, is a, uh, a Tears upgrade. A Tears upgrade takes us into the stratosphere with Mulligan and with Holy Light scaling based on that. Well, it's, it's really hard to not take Book of Revelations here, so let's do it. And I don't think any apology is necessary. That's, that's just very, very good. And of course, the beauty of it is... Uh, if you get a Book of Revelations and the ability to get a few more charges for Book of Revelations, you're pretty much set as far as using your orbital to kill enemies. So it works very well together. All right, we don't we don't want anything here. Even the Spirit Heart is cheap, but no longer essential. As bizarre as that is to say, early on having the opportunity to get those options is amazing, and I think we will pick this up. And I just want to get well. I don't. We don't really need to be at five cents now that I think about it. No real advantage to being at five cents. Alrighty, dude. We are good to go. This is like... I feel like we just packed up for a road trip. You know what I mean? I, I feel like... Uh, I don't know if anybody else is in this camp. Like, I, I used to watch this show called Doomsday Preppers. And it... Predominantly... I know this is a weird time to be talking about it. <laughs> Not that I think we're in preparations for a literal doomsday. But, you know, it's just a... Uh, it's the the doomsday clock is is it's ticked a little bit relative to when I was watching it in you know 2016 or so. Well, well worth it. Um, I, I got a feeling we got a penny in here. And while most of the doomsday preppers, I definitely disagreed with their um, their preparation methods. Like, let me put it this way: nobody on the show is ever scared about something that is a likely disaster. That's not to say it couldn't happen in a literal sense. But they're all scared about stuff that, that seems completely unfathomable. I ain't ever seen anyone on Doomsday Preppers be like, we're preparing for a global viral or bacterial infection. Instead, it's always like, I am preparing for, you know, an EMP nuclear blast to go off over the skies of Boise, Idaho. And I'm like, don't flatter yourself. But anyway, my main problem is that everybody's on that show. They stock up food. They stock up water. They prepare their shelter, but they all have, like, 20 guns per person. And I'm like, look, I'm I'm 100%, you can tell I'm, uh, for, to begin with here, I'm not a gun guy. Even if I were a gun guy, 20 guns per person. Like, I, I know that they're playing it up. I can't believe that this airs on the National Geographic Network as well, but I know they're playing it up for uh, entertainment's sake, but the number of times I've seen... Like, a 55-year-old dad give his 12-year-old son a Kalashnikov. And he's like, how do I shoot this thing, dad? And he's like, just squeeze it against your body and then squeeze the trigger. You know, I'm like, well, you know, it's a, I understand where the methodology and the reasoning for, for that fear comes from and that anxiety. But at the same time, I'm like, couldn't you just give him like a... I don't know, like a, like a bolt-action rifle or something? You're giving him an AK-47? Like he's in NWA or something like that? Anyway. That being said, I do like the feeling of being prepared. I think it comes from like, uh, like my grandma has, on my mom's side, has crazy anxiety. Like, like probably diagnosable anxiety, but she was born in the 30s where it was just like, you know, she's, she's got a, <laughs> a timid disposition, you know? It was a different era back then. They had other problems going on. Um, 
And she passed it on to my mom. My mom has done a really good job of mitigating her own anxiety, um, considering the situation that she grew up with with my grandma. And my mom passed it on to me. And, you know, because my mom did such a good job of controlling it, I don't have too much of it. And I've, I've worked on it myself as well. And I'm, you know, better than I've ever been. But I still, like, love the feeling of being prepared. Like, even when I was a kid, we would go on, like, a two-hour car trip. My mom and grandma would pack like 12 sandwiches and they're like, well, what if the car breaks down? What if everybody's car breaks down? You know, what, it, it just these situations that are like quite literally impossible. I do enjoy that feeling of being prepared. I enjoy that part of the road trip where you pack like a little bag. You got a couple of bottles of water in it. Get a couple granola bars, charge your cell phone, etc., etc. It's like a like a security blanket. Now, I will say, my mom is... And it, I, I understand, you know, I'm not a parent, so she's... I, I, I can't understand the, the fear that you have over your child, especially, I'm sure, you know, even though I'm in my 30s, you know, I'm, I'm sure it doesn't go away. But uh, my mom got me a hammer uh, that is, like, super... Um, I'm trying to think of the right word. Like, it's made of a material that can shatter glass... And she got it for me to put in our car. Um, she's like, you guys in Vancouver, you know, you're so close to the water. In case your car careens off of the road and into the water, I want you to have this so that you can, like, smash your windows in and get out. <laughs> and we have it in the car, because, you know... I really... I, I, I'm not afraid of death, but I am apprehensive about dying in, a, in an ironic way that means I got owned. Mostly, like, I put it in my car, so if I, you know, if it ever happens, my mom will be like, she'll get the feeling of having saved my life. But then beyond that, you know, if I ever died due to being trapped in my car after, I don't know, somehow driving into the Pacific Ocean. There's not too many opportunities in Vancouver for you to drive your car into the water. I'm just gonna... I mean, if you re you'd have to really want to. You wouldn't be like, Oh, I missed my exit! Blah, 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 you know? But... I don't know, she wouldn't be able to live with herself. She would be like, I gave him the hammer. Dude, we are cruising here. So there's a, probably unnecessary precautions, but that's fine. I was, Kate asked me the other day, she's like, I wonder what those people on Doomsday Preppers are feeling right now. <laughs> and I'm like, look, this is the time, it's like when your friend tells you, like, the St. Louis Blues are going to win the Stanley Cup when they're last in the NHL, and you're like, okay, buddy. What's it like being delusional? Then, you know, they win game seven against the Bruins, and you're like, I'm not going to call that guy for a little bit. I'm just going to let him enjoy his, his being right. Because most of the time you watch that show and you're like, these people are insane. Now, you know, when I think about the episodes, I'm like, these people are insane. But maybe we're hurtling towards the kind of insane, the kind of world where that insanity is actually an advantage. <laughs> I don't believe that yet, but um, def I feel like their stock is riding higher than ever, which would be unique in today's market conditions. Anyway, moving on. Just moving on here. Everything's good over here. Everything's fine on uh, on our end. Just kind of, you know, it's a weird time to be an anecdote-rich YouTube channel. Um, there's not too many anecdotes. Every once in a while, I look out my window. I made this tweet yesterday. One of the benefits of there being like... And, and actually, I should point out, by the way, because people... They might not have context for this. Vancouver is fine. There's like 80 cases confirmed in BC right now, which in my, you know, stat statistician part of my brain is like, okay, so there's probably about 10,000 cases here, but there's only 80 diagnosed. But, you know, it's life as usual for the most part, except the grocery stores are completely cleared out of everything. Um, but I see people outside now. On a very, very few people, but the unintended consequence of this kind of like self-imposed quarantine... Literally, we're living in a one-to-one -one human being-to-dog ratio right now, and it's awesome. 
Sometimes I'll look out my window, you know, like a month ago I look out my window, lots of people, people holding hands, people standing shoulder to shoulder, what are you thinking? We were so naive back then. Um, and now, the only people I see outside are walking their dogs. It's, it's awesome. I mean, it's not awesome the conditions that led to it necessarily. I don't know why I said necessarily. <laughs> well, you know, the virus has done some good. No. Well, maybe in the sense that it might, you know, improve public health standards in the future. But for now, let's not even go there. Regardless, the, the only positive that I can think of right now... A lot, lot more dogs outside. Not more dogs necessarily, but less people. So the, the, the solution of happiness is less diluted because of the propensity of the canines to be around. I don't own a dog. I'm, I'm not a dog person or... I mean, I'm, I'm not a dog person or a cat person, I think, but I, I do like animals. I, lo I love our cats, don't get me wrong. I just... You know, am I a cat person? I don't know. I feel like that entails some weirdness, doesn't it? Like... Not like... A cat person, like a cat's person, like the movie. I just mean like, you know, I'm not like cats rule, dogs rule. I think dogs are sick as well. But I do, I will say, I love to uh, smile at a dog in public. But I, I really like that cats don't require being walked. It's not like I'm not afraid of being outdoors. I, 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 I mean, lately maybe, but um, for the most part, I, I like to be outdoors. But I like to be outdoors on my own schedule, you know? I like I like that cats use an interior litter box. I understand the irony of that given our recent veterinary situation. Which, by the way, seems to be totally sorted. No, uh, no bowel movements on the bed recently, which is uh, not only a rule in our house, <laughs> but also uh, it's, it's a... Nice change of pace. But I, I think as a as a dog observer you get the you get the best of both worlds. Yeah, sure you don't get the love and attention and affection from the dog at home. Um, but at the same time it is it's nice to just you know when you live in a in a part of the world that has a lot of dogs, you just go outside, there's always dogs, you go, Oh, cute dog. What is that, a French bulldog? And they go, nah, it's a German shepherd, and you go, I don't know any I don't know, dude. I don't know anything about dogs. <laughs> All right. All I know, I, I like, I've, I've got a, a whole like conversational routine about dogs. Cause oftentimes, you know, I'll be in an elevator and I'll get mauled by dogs. Not mauled like, you know, literally, you know what I mean. You know, they'll kind of like jump on you or get excited. And then the person, because we live in Canada, they always go, oh my God, I'm so sorry. And you go, no, that's fine. And then they always say, and you know what's coming here. It's okay, they don't bite. And then I go, that's all right, I'm not afraid. And then we all go, <laughs> and it's a good time. I'd, I'd recommend it. If you can live in a in a place where dogs are around, I think it's good for your mental state. I, let me, you know, take a look right now. All right, honestly, it's a little eerie. I see no dogs. Um, I just saw. A 55-year-old woman carrying about 36 rolls of toilet paper. That really brought it home again. But you know what? We're going to move past that. We're going to move past that. And and the dogs, they're just enjoying their nap time right now. They're just enjoying their nap time. Hmm. You know what? I'll buy this. Yes. You know what? I'll use this. This is... It's not a moment of truth. Let's, let's be obvious. Like, this run is in a very, very great spot. It would be very nice to pick up some damage, is all I was going to say. And apparently that's <laughs> not going to happen, but that's okay. It is okay. Are we going to take nine lives? We don't have angel or devil, um, not even precedent, but like, you know. I, I actually don't want any of these eternal hearts for the rest. Actually, oh, if, if only, dude, if only I had taken nine lives, we could have then amped up our HP a lot. It's not really that big of a deal in a functional sense. Like, we're still going to be doing just fine. But it's like, a sl how could we? We couldn't have known. That's okay, though. One eternal heart should still be transferable. To be honest, this is one of the few times I would, like, very much consider not taking, um... 
nine lives in this situation, except for the fact that the other item is betrayal, which is like truly useless. But as you can see, you know, everything is totally okay on this run. Got nothing to complain about. Damage is low, not complaining. But one tears upgrade and one damage upgrade of, of a certain magnitude could go a long way right now. We're still gonna be fine, it's just this just determines the pace of the run. Like that Backstreet Boys song, you know? Show you the pace of my run. You don't, you don't know that one? It was big in the half marathon community. There's not too many songs about running, you know? There's no more running by Animal Collective, but, you know, on top of being a bit of a downer from a BPM standpoint, it doesn't have a title that's very good for, for people that are training. I'm trying to think of, uh... Oh, what, how about... Uh, no, it, it, the song is not called Run Like the Wind, it's called... And I'll ride, and I'll ride, ride like the wind. <clears throat> if you're not familiar with that guy, uh, you know what? You're just getting blown up because I want this devil chance. Um... So that is a, a singer that I only became aware of when I started working out and listening exclusively to 1970s to, you know, late 1980s classic rock um, in the gym because I'm 100 years old, apparently. And uh, this, this singer came up. His name was Christopher Cross. And I was like, yeah, the, he'll make you jump. Jump. <laughs> Daddy Mac will make you jump. Jump. Mac Daddy will make you jump. Yeah, I'm familiar with Christopher Cross. No, it's a different guy. His name is Christopher Cross. Anyway. Go look up a picture of Christopher Cross and tell me he doesn't remind you of Cobalt Streak. When I saw his photo, I was like, this is this is Cobalt Streak. I'm even gonna let me make sure I'm not, you know, incorrect here. Photos of Christopher Cross. Okay, let me be clear. F photos of Christopher Cross not in the present day. Not in the present day. Go ahead, Christopher Cross photos from like 19 in the 1970s and 1980s. As <laughs> now he's like a 70-year-old man who's not in the best shape. I want to be clear, that is not what I intended. Yo, let's go. See, that's why I'm glad I did the Google image search. Bob's rotten head. Well, at least get a little something something out of it. I'm so happy we got Cricket's head. But I will say, Christopher Cross, I hate to say it because I know he's popular, and I know he's popular because his albums always come up on Google Play Music uh, in, in the algorithmic machine learning rhythmic recommending engine, and uh, they always have like a... 20th century greatest artist greatest hits collection sort of vibe to the cover art so I know he's well liked but I do skip this I, I skip his songs when they come up just because I'm not listening to music from the 1970s and 1980s to like discover new things I'm listening to hear you know like you know Brandy used to watch his eyes when he told those sailor stories you know that's what I'm listening for I'm not, if I wanted to discover new music, I will watch the needle drop. I'm out here trying to figure out, you know, what my dad was listening to. No, 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 I'm, I'm not free, I'm not free. I will say, though, I, I was listening, I'm trying to think about how I got here. I think I put on Men at Work's Overkill. No, I should have just taken the right item there. Yikes, dude. How do we have so many items from good spots that are kind of trashy here? Um, and then, you know, track one, Men It Works Overkill. Track two, a little song called Voices Carry by Till Tuesday. I was driving, so I couldn't fiddle with the controls on my phone. I'm a man who practices what he preaches. Any of y'all out there? I don't like this song. Let me get my phone out and change it. Uh-uh. Absolutely not. So I, I had to listen to this song 
Voices Carry by Till Tuesday. I was pleasantly surprised. I was like, this song's a real... It's a bop. Then I realized Amy Mann is the singer from Till Tuesday. Had no idea. So that's today's uh, song of the day recommendation is Voices Carry by a band called Till Tuesday. Highly recommended, you know. I think I already talked about this in an Isaac episode. I can't remember. Again, you know, not that much going on right now. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna be recycling lots of anecdotes. Prepare yourself. I will say I did go to the grocery store last night. I was uh, well. It, it's it's a funny anecdote. My wife sent me out to the grocery store. I'm like, uh, I'm not a survivalist, in case that's abundantly clear. I have, like, no survival skills. But, like, a week ago, I bought a bunch of spam and a bunch of potatoes, some vegetables, and, like, you know, canned food. And I'm like, this is what I eat now. My wife is like, I don't want to eat spam and potatoes for dinner every night. And I'm like, all right, okay, your majesty. Um, so she's like, I, I would really, like... I know we can't, like, go out, or we shouldn't go out to a restaurant, but I'd really like, like, some pasta tonight. And I was like, okay, what kind of pasta would you like? What kind of sauce would you like? Blah, blah, blah. Went to the grocery store. My questions, it turned out, were not relevant. There were two packages of pasta remaining. One of them was, like, a multicolored orecchiette. And then the other one was lasagna sheets. And I said, all right, we're going to go with the orecchiette then. And then there were literally two jars of pasta sauce remaining. And I went, all right, I'll take those. And, uh, and that's that. It was like, you might say, why don't you make your own pasta sauce? Well, that would be nice, but unfortunately that requires uh, fresh tomatoes, which were, for whatever, it must be a bad season because the fresh tomatoes were, were totally gone. Like, I feel like my grocery store right now looks like what people on Twitter think grocery stores in Cuba look like. Like, I just... You, you no longer, at least for now, have, have like, a preference. It's just, what do you want from the grocery store? Pasta. What kind? Uh, you know... <laughs> available? Available is the best, I would say. I'm not trying to... I'm, look, I'm, I'm mining this stuff for humor. Here's the thing. I have had people... Particularly on the NLSS when we've been talking about it. They've been like, can you talk about something else? Like, I watched the show to assuage my anxiety and, you know, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, no, I understand. First off, I don't know what I'm going to talk about until the episode starts. Usually it talks about what's going on in life and everybody's inside because of the freaking coronavirus, you know? So, um, what do you think we're going to talk about? And then on top of that, I'm like, dude, if you got topics, pass them on, baby. Because I'd be happy to talk about them. But, you know, I'm also, you know, I'm not suffering from, like, anxiety about the virus necessarily i've just taken some necessary precautions but you know i feel like you gotta kind of like you know live with it because it's like a big deal if that makes sense i don't want to look I'm, I've, I've struggled with how to address this and i don't know if this is the best way to do it but i am kind of like i understand you're like i've got to watch something to take my mind off it but at the same time i'm also like you know if we end up living in, you know, a social distancing world for the next, like, three months. Let's just, let's just call that a, an estimate, whether it's conservative or liberal, you can choose for yourself, right? Um, you know, you probably should build up the necessary defensive mechanisms to understand that you're gonna be hearing some content about it. Like, the, there's no sports, there's no movies, TV shows have ceased production, um... You, there's not a whole heck of a lot going on outside of this right now. I've been losing my mind seeing people like on social media, and you would think it's mostly on TikTok, but it's not. It's it's actually mostly on Twitter. Like I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm too callous about this because I I understand. Okay, we should peep this actually. Like I understand. Let's go. It's the greatest dream of all time. Um, I understand like being sad. Um, that like, let's say you are graduating from college this year, you know, and your college is like, we're not going to do an in-person graduation because of the fact that, you know, there's a 
pandemic happening right now or if you're graduating from high school and they're like you know proms canceled look like i i genuinely have the empathy i can put myself in the shoes of of the people that are going through that right now and maybe they've looked forward to this their whole lives you know particularly for some people like a college graduation is a huge milestone for them maybe that's been the carrot on the stick to get them to work so hard throughout their life or prom has been like you know it's seen as like the it's the capstone to your social experience in high school for a lot of people not for me but uh i get it like and i'm actually empathetic but at the same time i think you get to complain about it exactly one time like if, if you're like man it sucks that there's not gonna be like prom this year i'm like yeah it does suck you're not wrong i didn't have to go through that if you're like yeah but it really sucks i'm like no it doesn't because like people are dying or like on ventilators like <laughs> I'm I'm on your side, but it's also a dance. Like, you know. Moreover, I mean, and this is maybe just because I'm wired weirdly, but I'm like, dude, I I think this would be a really and hear me out here, because I'm talking long term horizon, you know, we make it through this. You're gonna have a great story to tell people. You know, I never got to go to my own college graduation because there was a worldwide disease outbreak happening at the time. All the events got canceled. Stop complaining. If we make it through it, you're going to have street cred forever. Now, I'm just trying to lighten the mood. You can still complain about it, you know, to your to your peers. I'm just saying. Strangers are, are going to start to run out of sympathy at some point. Maybe it's not right. I'm just like... I guess I'm, I'm, it's turning me into like a 65 year old man in the sense where I'm like brother if this is just the tip of the iceberg and we got people complaining about school dances and the work potluck is cancelled like we gotta we're gonna have to tighten our belts way further than that dude we haven't even gotten started yet potentially you know what we're gonna have to do to stop climate change you're worried about not being able to go out to the freaking olive garden for two weeks anyway Okay, sorry, I'm, I'm bumming people out. I just, my producer just said you're bumming people out. Okay, we're moving on, sorry. Entertainment, entertainment. Clean family entertainment on the white marble. But I have found myself thinking like, you know, harden the F up. <laughs> just a little bit. I'm, bit. I'm rarely one of those guys that's like, you know, Hey, uh, better pull yourself up by your bootstraps, buttercup. Things are going to get rough. But then, you know, the same kind of people that even say those things are like, you know, not go to a bar for a week? Impossible. If I do that, the virus wins. Oh, my God. You just got to... I'm I'm so thankful that I'm like a homebody to begin with. I mean, I, I've been preparing for this for, for years. How many times have you heard me say... I don't really like going out. I love staying inside. When I'm out, the number one thing I'm concerned with is how quickly I can get back inside, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I get that it's easier for me. But, uh... At the same time, I'm like, you can be like me. I'll teach you. Get Netflix. You know? Get, you, download the Kindle app on your phone, get a bunch of free books, you're good to go. I did see, and I shouldn't be spotlighting this stuff, but I do it almost, I guess, is like... I'm gonna choose to think of it as a way to spotlight ignorance to hopefully root it out. But, you know, the Canadian border, and this is how you know we're on like a six-day backlog, seven-day backlog. The Canadian border just closed um, for non-essential travel and also for non-Canadian citizens and permanent residents, which is a huge deal. Um, although they are leaving it open to American travelers, because, I mean, I, I get that the infection is also in the United States, but, you know, I'm not on that policy side of things. If I was playing Plague Inc., I'd be shutting it all down and going to Madagascar, but I don't know the implications of that for trade and whatever. You know, I leave that up to the experts. Um, regardless, I, I saw someone reply to the tweet that's like, people don't understand what it's like to live in a small border town. Like, sometimes I need to get out of this town for my own sanity. Because there's nothing going on here. And I'm like, what are you... We got bigger problems, Glenda! What are you... I just... I'm so going so crazy cooped up in this house. How you doing? Ah, oh, feeling bored. Might F around and become a carrier for an infectious disease later. And it's... I'm like, what are you crossing the border for? Is it the same 
like, I don't want to say Canada and America are the same country. But, like, on a day-to-day -day level, it's pretty close. <laughs> on a macro level, there's huge differences. But on a, on a micro, how do you live your day-to-day -day level, there's a lot of similarities. The, the number of people, like, there's so much traffic from Vancouver to, you know, Bellingham. These are northern Washington cities. Bellingham, you know, Seattle, Linwood, Redmond, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, there's so much travel to these cities on a, like, a daily basis from Vancouver. And it's always, like... I just wanted to eat at the Cracker Barrel. We don't have those down here. Oh, they got outlets where you can buy a coach purse for 5% off uh, what it would cost me in Vancouver, you know? Gas is slightly cheaper. Well, actually, it's markedly cheaper, but anyway. I'm like, you can, what do you mean you're, you gotta get out of your one-horse town so you can... Hey, you know what they're doing? Downtown Toronto. Netflix. Downtown Vancouver. Netflix. New York City, Manhattan. Netflix. We're all watching Netflix, Glenda. Get on the train, baby! We all gotta band together here. They just claim it came out with Dirty Money Season 2. I'd recommend it. Very interesting. I am a little surprised that this run, while good, for sure, never reached, like, incredible status. I can't believe for all the items we got, we didn't get a single tiers upgrade. That's throwing me for a freaking loop, dude. Anyway, don't shoot me. I guess I am just, you know, I'm sure a lot of people out there are in the exact same boat right now. People are going stir crazy due to being inside, and I'm like, dude, this is my, this is my dream come true. You know, it would be terrible for my lifestyle if there was like a virus that somehow affected you via isolation. <laughs> <laughs> if it was like, you must go out and be in a crowd of 250 people at any given time. Thank God it's not like that. I mean, I would... I don't have, like, agoraphobia. But I would just be annoyed constantly. I would be very irritable and grumpy. Instead, for the most part, I'm like, man, I feel really... <laughs> this this pandemic has got me really recharged. It's been a great opportunity to, to really just enjoy being a homebody. You know, there is, it's, it's a bad time for this quote, I'll admit, but I hope you'll hear me out. There's this quote, never let a crisis go to waste. That's how I feel right now, to some extent. I'm like, eh, I'm forced to stay inside, but on the other hand, I can finally watch The Lighthouse. Finally got a good opportunity to watch The Lighthouse starring Willem Dafoe. Now, is it worth it? Well, I can't answer that question. I haven't seen The Lighthouse yet. I suppose if The Lighthouse is such an incredibly well-made movie, it makes up for a global disease outbreak that, you know, is affecting, potentially, affecting, not infecting, but affecting billions of people worldwide, then, no, of course it's not worth it. I'm just, I'm just being a, I'm just being a devil's advocate. Just making, making jokes about the situation to try to lighten the mood, okay? Some of us live in a, Little one-horse border town. We make jokes to lighten the mood, okay? Friday night. I'm thinking that we just might. Okay, get me out of here. 18 wins in a row and a solid one at that for now. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. Upside a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. See ya!